Hello my good friends, it's Roger again. This time we're getting deeper and deeper and deeper into the nuclear core. Now, hydrogen wave functions. We were talking about this last time and I was showing some atomic modeling with magnets and we're going to do that again. But just see what you see. Hydrogen, just basic hydrogen. Then you get into all kinds of different hydrogen. Hydrogen isn't just one little uh, proton and uh, one little electron and it's not even that whatsoever but we're going to get into it deeper but the only way to account for the isotopes and every single every single um, element has m m isotopes and many of them have many isotopes and all isotopes are is different configurations of the atomic core and they say well Maybe that's right, maybe that's wrong. So let's investigate. Now, we're going to get into this. This is, um, let me turn this big light off. Darkness, darkness. Oops, there it is. All right, here's, here's what we got. These are magnets. Let me see if I can get this so it doesn't. I guess that's better. All right, now, I hope that's better. Now, what we're looking here is a bunch of magnets. And you say, well, what kind of magnets are those? Well, here they are right here. These kind of magnets right here. Now, each one of those is one of those little balls. So that is a single one. Now, I'm saying that that mimics the hydrogen wave function that we just saw. You see that? Now, what do you see? You see a center, they show it white. I'm sure ours, the real thing is black. Now, what is the difference between black and white? Well, one's white and one's black. <laughs> no, 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 no. One is positive and one's negative. So, what's what? Which one's what? They're showing white in the center. I'm showing black in the center, and I'm showing magnetism. That's ferrule paper. You see this? Watch. I can look that right off of it. What's under there is magnets. Now, they create these different patterns when you put this back on. There, those patterns are, are, are here. Let me just wash them out. Let me back out of here so this will become a little more obvious. Now, I'm going to, you just take this and you swish it across a few times, back and forth, and it, it um, pretty much cleans it up. Now, when I put this down, it will polarize the particles here, and it will polarize them in such a way that where positive is, it's dark, where negative is, it's white, and I and I can basically prove that with with magnets that I have. Uh, whoops, here's another one that I have um, north and south pole um, written on. If you believe my north and south pole. Now, um, but let's see what happens when I put this on here. You just drop it on, boom. There they are. Now a minute ago, whoops, there it goes. They're very reactive. These single ball magnets, and it just attached into here and got sucked up. So let's get these out of the way because the, the, the single one is hard. As soon as I take the paper up from it, it goes. I have to put it in this little pocket here. And I tell you, it is reactive. A single one. And now watch what happens. There's a polarity to that. You know, that's not just a ball of, of magnetism. There's, it's just like the Earth. It has a north and a south pole. So let's see what we find this time. Boom. All right, so we're pretty much in the center. We've got a little extra dark there and a little more white there. Well, what does that tell us? That tells us we're not dead center on the pole. So if we turn, I think we have to turn it this way to get it more centered to the pole. So we'll come back this way just a hair. Oh, I think that's worse. We go back this way, click. Click two ears. Uh, no, that's terrible too. Now, but you could see what I'm saying. We could play around with this all day, and I do. <laughs> Let me just jiggle it around. Sooner or later, you get it where you want. See, it's, see, see, we're getting two poles. It's very strong two dipoles. You see the dark? That's extremely attractive to negatives. The negative is extremely attractive to positives. But you can get it on its central pole. There it goes. All right, see that? Well, that's pretty good. But you still have some white here and the dark down there. But this shows electron flooding. 
And what is electron flooding? Electron flooding means that the nucleus, which is the absolute dead center core, right, the black spot, that is the positive attractive source. And it is literally exactly identical to the Earth. It has a north and south pole. It's round. It attracts to its entirety these that little white line of electrons. That is a white line of electrons. That's electrons. And I'm going to show you its electrons because I can drive this across and show you as it goes. Well, look. You see it? I'm going to push electrons one way or push them the other way. You see? Now, if I take that out of there, and watch this. You see this here? When you take a long chain like that, you will end up with a positive and a negative end and all kinds of things. And that, all that is, is they call them ligands and they're different types of bonding attachments, ionic bonding and so forth. Now, watch. Boom. You see that dark spot? In that dark spot? That is serious attraction. And you see all these white regions around these black domains? If you could see that well, and I think you should be able to, you're going to understand, or you should understand, what you are seeing in there is dark zones of positive attractiveness, and then light zones of negative influence. So, what creates stability? To me, I, th I see what creates stability in my mind is 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 symmetrical wave functions so that these these regions and wells and zones are completely consistent and they like I know like a, a, a note Bing, and they'll do that but if they're not consistent and you have which these are not like you'll see some like they'll have zones this it's hard to see which one would fall apart but they will if you shake these with vibrations and these wells and zones are not extremely symmetrical they will fall apart they'll fall apart and that's why you see these you see these well-defined zones that's the only thing that's going to stay together let me show you something else that'll show my point all right, this is light from a red pulsed laser, just a construction laser which shoots out red pulsed laser. Now, what happened to that laser? It came through the air in a darkened room, and you could see all these little spots in the room illuminating. These new cameras are absolutely phenomenal at picking up interactions of light. Now, what has happened here? That particular wave is now elongated which obviously means it's being sucked forward through a venturi which everyone is understands a venturi they use them in carburetors they suck the gas through and atomized it because it accelerated exactly like this that light wave is literally only particles and the particle beam is literally only this little machine gun bullet stream the a huge concussion wave is because these particles don't only own this particular spot they own a huge region around them and that follows with them and that everybody has to get out of the way that's why it all concussed and turned red and and uh, you get the um, well it's it's illumination because of the concussion of the wave coming through those are free electrons that are in the air, and there's absolutely no question they're there. They collect on you as static electricity. They discharge the ground when it's in a dry environment. They collect on, on water molecules. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And they collect on other molecules, too, that are gases that are in the air. But primarily water molecules, extremely attractive to electrons which are ubiquitous everywhere and they are not only here they are in space too electrons are part of light which that is part of light we're seeing the particles coming they are now concussing they're not just waves of nothing they're particles those particles are seen here in 
I, you know, if you can't see them, I don't know what to say. And then you can also see here the little white particles that are the reverse EMF, electromotive force, coming back from this concussion wave of these magnetic balloons. Bloop, 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 come back here. That is what you see in there. That is reverse EMF. And that is an extreme copious high voltage reverse waves. Now, what's happening here at the Venturi? Well, the Venturi says everybody's got to get through here and just to get through here, do the best you can. He said, well, I'm going to have to push everybody out of my way. Well, push. And they come in and they push like hell. And they turn it to plasma. What's plasma? Plasma is particles that have no boundaries. All right, think about that. They're particles that don't have this big boundary and they're a little bitty, 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 tiny particle. They, are, they have no boundaries now. They are all touching each other almost. This is not allowed. They want this region, literally this big, that tiny little particle wants this. And now it has to be amongst some of its neighbors that probably doesn't like them very much. And they want to get away and it comes out and it sprays out of here in repulsive magnetic patterns not because of flappy waves this is from the main beam coming through is a negative block of particles and that shifts a positive region a negative region positive region negative region that is what you see and at the boundary at the very extreme boundary there's nobody to hold it in so they spray and flip around as they want this is what is happening here the particle is in the center it is now being elongated and being sucked through because it has to accelerate to get through here. It is, there is no other option. This is a venturi, two curved metal surfaces. Boom! You have to push each other and force each other into there. Plasma is what they want to create nuclear fusion. This is light. CERN says they cannot see these particles, but they know they exist. They say they know they exist, they can't see them. And they know they exist. Well, CERN looks for these. They look for these Higgs fields. Exactly, exactly identical. No difference whatsoever. Identical to what CERN is looking for, for their Higgs fields. And here they are right here. And they are coming out from Cherenkov, or Cherenkov, however you want to pronounce it, radiation, which is high speed particles, or particles that are coming into a region of space that is denser than they are coming from. It creates a high-speed particle, or a, a, a concussed particle, let's put it that way. These are the particles I'm talking about right here. You saw the wave functions. What are you seeing there? I'm seeing a wave function. Boom, 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 boom. I'm not seeing all white. I'm seeing the two particles. I'm seeing an upspin, I'm seeing a downspin. And that is what they look for. And that is what they call a photon, which ha makes it have a neutral presentation to the world because it is sufficed with both of its positives and negatives together. However, if you broke that in half, like they do at CERN, you are going to see an electron and you're going to see a positron, which they say they see. They see them, only they're bigger particles. Now, let's see what CERN does say. All right, here's what CERN says. Right, let me put the spotlight on CERN. Da -da -da -da. All right, CERN, what do you have to say? Speak up, CERN. All right, what does CERN say? CERN says they see these things. They see plus particles and minus particles. They charge particles. And they know this because they have them in force fields. And if they put a positive charge, it sucks it up towards us. If they put a negative charge, it pushes them away. Now, the other ones react oppositely, so they are obviously a different charge. So I'll go along with that. Now, what else did I see? And they see some are bigger, others are smaller. They see different chunks of the nucleus because they're smashing the hell out of them with a gigantic hammer. And they feed, here's what's happening. They're hitting two helium cores, which is the two helium 
nucleuses have two protons uh, in each. Uh, I, I'm sorry. They're using they're using eight thousand times as heavy a mass, so they have four cores in each one. No, wait, I'm I'm messing up here. They have two cores in each one, and they're hitting them head on, which is eight thousand times the amount of what I am doing. All right. I'm using electron particles, light, which is the, is the smallest particle. And with with um, electron flood, you have eighteen hundred and thirty six particles in every core. Okay, so when they smash this to bits, what are they seeing? They're seeing one of that, or they're seeing one of those, or they're seeing a couple of these. But in my world, in a proton, in the proton where they're smashing it apart to see pieces, I see 1836 additional pieces in here, one of which is a light particle. And we're going to go over that, and I'll show you the light particles right there. That's one of these particles is an electron, the other particle is a positron. Between those two, there's 918 of those in each proton. So if you smash one of these little tiny protons, which they think is a, almost the tiniest particle there is, it's not. It's nowhere near the tiniest. It's 1836 of them, and every electron is the weight, and they know this, and Millikan proved this, it's the weight of of um, 1836 electrons make one weight of one proton, which is atomic mass unit basically. And they don't even hardly count the electrons, so they consider the neutron basically the same weight. And it's not. It is more than a proton. And it is more by a pro than a proton by an electron. And it's true. That's what it weighs. More by basically exactly an electron. So, what does that mean? It means a neutron is not neutral. It's it's got a negative charge to it. And almost every single nucleus has additional neutrons and negative charges. So the core is positive heavily because that's the nature of it. And then additionally it throws that negative extra in the core which keeps more additional electrons out in orbit. That's the quantum magnet that I show the um, well let me show it to you now